It's 3.15, and that means it's time for... The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. That's right. Welcome once again to The Real Deal with Bill McNeil. I'm your host, Bill McNeil, and you're probably wondering exactly what is The Real Deal today. Hey, good question. Welcome back to Thank You Critical. This is Wes. It's time for another complicated conversation with my good friend, Gervain Dargan, former assistant editor at Milestone Comics, the man behind the upstart comic publisher, Animated Concepts. How are you doing, Gervain? I'm doing good, Wes, and I hope everybody out there in the, in the interwebs is doing well, too. Absolutely. Now, people probably think we're going to talk about comic books. You know, it's complicated. <laughs> we're a couple of comic nerds, but we just talk about things that are a little bit more complicated, sometimes comp- comic books. We, we will actually do that next week. But this week, we're going to yeah. talk about kind of the, the news media, but it feels like there's almost a consensus a, a large a vast majority of americans and other people throughout the, well well let's stick to america last vast majority of americans agree that the news media are dishonest that they they are definitely agenda driven and that we shouldn't believe them but it feels like we keep buying into this stuff hook line and sinker whenever the news media are manipulating us to yell at each other and be mad at each other i don't get it Gervais. how did we get here well, I think I think we got here because basically there's just way too much of the wrong money <laughs> in news media right now. It's like it's, this is what happens. Entertainment it's rather than well, than journalism. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's become very profit driven. So it's not about actually seeking the truth or providing um, information of value or integrity to the public. It's more about you know what can we do to goose up you know, our ratings or goose up our, well, it used to be print runs or goose up our um, site clicks in order to, you know, get that, get that ad and that revenue money. And, um, you know, this whole idea of what I, I believe it was once called the fifth estate is just gone now. It, it, it you know, you know, news media now is just an, into, it's just an arm of entertainment companies just to um, do basically, which I guess on some level, social media just does a whole lot better, which is like you said, is to gen us up against each other, create enemies where there aren't any, keep us all um, off center and divided, and um, and basically frustrated and whatever their whatever their deep secret goals are, they're they're accomplishing it because they have us talking about things that really have nothing to do about nothing. You know, it's crazy. At the end of the day. I think you probably remember this. We're we're about the same age. You're, I think you're a few years older than me, but you remember what, like. Uh, like a big news story when we were kids was when that little girl fell down the well. Mm-hmm. And it felt like yep. you were bombarded with coverage of, uh, was it baby Jessica? Mm-hmm. I believe I that's have, what it was, yeah. I might have the name yep. wrong, but that, that girl was in the well for like three days. I guarantee you the coverage on that is like fractions, like a mm-hmm. fraction of the stuff that's not even important that we get today. Or you remember like the Challenger accident would have been a very big news yep. story. But you were yep. getting that information I don't know, five, ten minutes at a time, and the people that were giving it to you did not have time to really get into their own personal opinions or do any type of spins. They literally just had time to give you the information, the facts, and then keep you appraised what was going on. But because of the 24-hour news cycle, obviously predicated you know, with the arrival of CNN, then you've got all these other news channels out there, and they're content-driven, just like my YouTube channel is where they need to have content that's going to be entertaining and when it comes to news entertainment is controversy it's it's get getting people up getting them nervous getting them angry getting them excited uh, about all the wrong things nowadays oh yeah and and i think you hit the nail on the head there is that that part of it was is that you you had more channels so i mean do you have to then on some level this gets laid at the feet of cable of cable television the fact that we have more channels and and more content to consume so that creates a lot more competition and the need to basically stand out more and to do things that are more and more shocking and uh and attention grabbing and then once cnn came along and they and they basically created a market for 24-hour news now it's like you got to figure out how to how to fill all those hours and they can't all be infomercials (laughs) Mm -hmm. (laughs) used to be in the beginning and that means you have to basically sensationalize more and more things that basically ordinarily would have been trivial or just written off to as either a regional or local issue. Now, everything's a national issue. Every or Everything that's national is local, uh, affects people locally, even if it's not the case. And I, and I think a lot of times it's not the case. I think there's some things that are trumped up in the media that a lot of us really just don't care about. 
you know, it just, it just, just don't give a, just don't give a crap about. It. And then if it is, and if it's not that, then it's like you're not getting an objective view of the events of the, of the facts and uh, and the matters at hand. You know, just to bring up this whole Kyle Rittenhouse um, trial that's going on, and you know, and it's just like it's just gotten to the point where it's just like, look, people talk about well, we're, they're worried about um, what's going to happen once the verdict comes down, and it's like, okay, they're going to be worried about why the verdict is coming down because of all the media that and and the way you guys have slanted the whole thing from the beginning. The simple you fact of the matter is, Jermaine, yeah, well, I have wait, family wait. members that still think he shot through like three black men. Oh no! Exactly. Oh, oh no! And that, that was one of the points that, um, on one of the more independent, um, I guess if you call it independent, the Hill, but even that's uh, basically what we consider mainstream or corporate media. They were making was that people don't realize this is basically four white guys, and you know, one white guy shot three white guys at a protest that happened to be about the um, you know, injustice, uh, the police injustice committed against, against, committed against a black guy. Exactly. It's like they still think that's or that, you know, his thing was is that he was just a racist going out to look to hunt for black people and so on and so forth. And I don't and I don't uh, pretend to know the mindset of Kyle Rittenhouse or, you know, what he was thinking. But the simple fact of the matter is, is that at the end of the day, as we've now found out by watching at least some of the footage, uh, leaks, watching some of the coverage is that whether people like it or not, even though it was dumb for him to have the weapon, it was probably dumb for him to go up there for the reasons that he did it. At least in this moment, the dude probably thought he was in fear for his life, given what happened with at least one of the people that he shot. And it's like, but because now all this other stuff has been um, weaved into this narrative, it, people are taking away the wrong, the, taking away, taking away the wrong, having the wrong takeaways from this now. And it's like, I'm not going to play into a buy into this. Oh my God, you know, if Kyle Rittenhouse gets off, there should be like a riot. I'm like, no, it, it's. He made a dumb decision. He caught um, he caused people some lives, or they caused themselves some lives. Even like people said, the people who attacked him, if they thought they heard gunshots, they thought there was an active shooter, that's why they ended up attacking him. He's looking at the fact that all well, these people are coming after me. You know, it, it's and, and the media doesn't provide an objective lens for us to really process and discuss these issues in a way that we can move forward. At the very least, understand that if nothing else, we shouldn't be driving our seventeen year olds over state lines with assault rifles. To, well, see, that's uh, more information that's completely outlets. been fucked up by the media. And you would think with all the coverage <laughs> that this event had, that we would all have the basic details more than anything. So, dude, please enlighten me on that one, because that's definitely one of the words that I lives in Kenosha. He has family there. He never took a weapon over state lines. The weapon was there to begin with. He went over there, and it was well, given to him. I have proven the point. <laughs> This exactly. Is how, this is how jacked up the media is. Yep. The, the details mm. would be coming out so hot and heavy, and they would be so consistent yep. with the actual facts, but we're not getting any of that, that nobody yep. actually realizes what actually happened here. Yep. It's like, no, what was in Kenosha? It's like, his fucking dad lives there. Dad lives his there. aunt no, lives there. He's got a grandma there. Yeah, He's and not people just some don't stranger have... looking for a fight. Oh, no, no. I got you. If people if people do not have the time to be investigative reporters or debunkers to this degree, this is what you rely on the media for, to get the facts and present the facts to you. Um, I wouldn't even say not to the best of their knowledge, but to actually vet these up, <laughs> to actually get to the actual truth. Because so now they don't want to give you truth. They want to give oh, you no, opinions. They, they want to shape how they you don't. feel about something rather exactly. than giving you the information and letting you process it. And come to your own yeah. conclusion. Yeah. No. So yeah, like I said, I've heard I've heard that in a number of the reportings that yeah, basically his mom drove him out there uh, to the protest. Basically, dropped him off with with the assault rifles. He went to uh, wherever he came across some shop or something like that. Got hooked up with a bunch of guys. Went off by himself. The whole thing happened as he was walking away. The cops let him walk by. They gave him a pass, and, and that was all basically um, characterized. Uh, depending on which media outlet you were looking at um, towards your particular um, uh, political persuasion ideology. And it's just it's just messed up because there's enough messed up things going on in that that we don't need the extra. We don't we don't need this extra push for it to be something that's de divisive or in this case, just plain old misinforming. So, you know, it's like I always go back to the Les Moonves thing. And I think it I think he, what he said when it came to the coverage of Trump um, pretty much um, embodies the media's approach about everything. He's like, 
you know, Trump may be bad for America, but he's basically good for us. And at that time, he was referring to CBS. It's like they don't care. <laughs> they, they don't care. They're going to sens- sensationalize the hell out of this in order to get ratings so they can get ad money, and that's all they care about. They're not. They're not good faith actors. They're not good actors. Period. And um, and we're all going to. And if not us, definitely the generations after us. Um, I even say us now. I think we're paying the price for these guys' greed and complete lack of understanding and irresponsibility about the trust that they're given, which is to basically share information and, and to share information objectively. So, yeah, you're, you're right. I, I, yeah, I've I heard. It was in my mind he drove up state lines with that thing. With, uh, he drove up no. state lines. So That was a yep. gift he was Guilty. waiting for Guilty him on charged. the other side. That's where his family lives there. Mm-hmm. It's crazy that um, they're unwilling to give you the facts and let you come to a conclusion because they're so yep. intent on, on uh, you know, kind of twisting totally. or bending your perception yep. of things. You know, do these, do journalists go to ethics class anymore? I remember going through ethics in, in high school. <laughs> well, I, uh, now I watch a show called The Hill, um, called, called The Hill, and I'm sure it has its own problems, its, its pros and its cons as well. But that was a point that a guy, Robbie Smoave, I think his name is, um, he's one of the regular calls that I made about that. He's like, there is at least the sentiment now that if you are actually seriously going into journalism, that you should even, that it's almost a joke to go to journalism school because what they teach you there apparently, you know, produces these kinds of outcomes. And if they're not teaching that there, whatever they are teaching you doesn't um, insulate you enough, prepare you enough to resist the system once you get into it. Because this is not this is not at least what we all would have thought journalism is in our heads. This is basically infotainment. <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> and it's you remember, like as we were growing up, like Dan Rather is a yep. trusted news source. And yep. now, you know, with the lens of, of time and hindsight twenty twenty, <laughs> we know that certainly Ooh, administrations hey. had more influence on him and he had access, mm-hmm. like he was kind of behind the scenes and a part of things that you would have imagined a, a you know, a, a journalist who was unbiased to be a part of, but you believe what he was saying and, and that he was trying to give you the truth. I can't think yeah. of really a, a couple of journalists w- within it or within the industry right now that I can even trust. I mean, I personally like, um, who's the guy on Fox News, the, the one with the bow tie? I, I like him a lot, Tucker. Ross. Yeah, but he's, he's kind of, right, but even he's, he's admitted that. You know, he, he's he started. Yeah. He's an opinion maker. Yeah. He's an op- yeah, but he started out with, at the Daily Call, if I understand, he was trying to at least get to the point of, at least your facts have to be right. Your opinions can be whatever they want to be, but your facts have to be right. But then he clearly threw in the towel once he got over. <laughs> once he got over well, Fox see, News in the current iteration. Yeah, no, he's just he's just he's just moved away from the journalistic thing into the opinion thing because then you don't necessarily have to have a responsibility to telling the like, truth. I like, like that. you're just giving calls, your opinion. But I know if he says something, I need to read up on it. I just can't just take anything at face value. Uh, well, I well honestly, I, I and this is not because I'm throwing Tucker into this by himself. I just don't trust any of them, so I, I'm That's not going to give saying. Tucker. Uh, yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, I'm not going to give trust because I mean, I use the I use the uh, more on my quote unquote side. I use the Katie Curry thing. That nonsense that came out about her with this whole Ruth Bader Ginsburg thing. It's like, are you serious? <laughs> she literally, she literally buried half an interview or whatever it was because she knew what it would look like. Um, this, 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 um, this like mythic vision that that people on the left have built up about their heads about Ruth Bader Ginsburg, which based on if you were reading between the lines, some of that didn't add up anyway. It's like now you found out there was a bunch of stuff that she said that yeah, if she had said that, Joy was like, yo, get her out of there now before she dies. <laughs> get somebody else in there. Well, it's like it, it, it's like I have talked with people off, you know, I have talked with people about this this idea of like is there any such thing as true and it's like dude honestly um even people and there have been studies done even people who have witnessed events and witness events and incidents firsthand still get it wrong when you're talking about you when you're looking like at original source document stuff there are clear inaccuracies in terms of what people are writing down as fact what they're observing all those kind of things so the thing is is there really is no such thing as true but you should at least be striving for it as best you can these people aren't even striving for it they're controlling 
they're manipulating it. They're releasing it to us on this assumption that they know better than us or that they think it's like, you know, this is in your best interest, trust me. And the thing is, is that nobody wants to do that because when they get it wrong, they never take responsibility for it. They never take accountability for it. They just leave you holding a bag. It's like, well, tough luck, kid. You know, uh, good luck with that. So I, I'm at this point, honestly, it, it was funny because I was thinking about this morning because I didn't know what our topic was going to be this table. I was thinking about this morning, but I'm about to cancel even the few memberships I have from the guys, people who I do feel I trust and do even give me an honest opinion because it's just like, nah, man, you know, I could do this by myself. <laughs> it's like 90% of the information I'm getting is I can pretty much assume is bogus anyway. So I'll just think my own thoughts and, and do my own things. But it's like, you know, just like we're talking about this Rittenhouse thing, if it's like, if I'm sitting here thinking the kid's bringing stuff against state lines and, da, 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 and being aided and abetted by his parents, and you're saying, nope, after three, you know, six months later, that's not what happened, and this, 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 and that, what do I need these guys for? I just, just watch, sit down and watch the He-Man Netflix series and just be entertained. That's all they're good for, but they're not good for, they're not good for information and or creating an environment where people can have forward thinking and forward moving discussions that's maybe that's the purview of like you know independent you know um podcasters on youtube and then even then it's like you're just going to run into the same problem once they start to become like um the plate the destination to go for that kind of news and then the money starts infiltrating that's what happened with the young turks it's clear clear once they got that money they just lost their dang minds after they got it they they um, Anna Kasparian, because, you know, I used to be, I used to support that channel, used to watch it all the time. It was like, there was this one thing she just lied up behind off about something. And I canceled my membership. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. I'm not doing this anymore. So, yeah. It is crazy. It feels like it's a tough. lot more and more people are being driven away from, from mainstream media into, you know, podcasting oh, yeah. or like YouTube sources. I think like, I think like the, the election coverage on Louder with Crowder. Mm-hmm had more viewers than any of like the news networks. No, oh, yeah, no, That's it's insane. like stuff like, you know, this uh, breaking points with Crystal and Saga, you know, you know these are all places, a uh, bad faith podcast with Brandon Joy Gray. There's definitely other places you can go to get your information now, because it's quite frankly, the mainstream media just cannot be trusted. They just can't be trusted. Now, you, you know, we're all, we, we know where all this is at least, the most recent of incident to spark this kind of a conversation of thinking is that still dossier nonsense. Are we really? <laughs> it's like, oh, they're finally I mean, coming Russia clear. Game. They're finally oh, being uh, honest about that. And how many lies came out of that thing? Oh, it, you know, and the thing is, at the beginning, I got to a lot of fights with my friend on the left, friends on the left, because they thought that I was advocating or not being mindful of like where something like a Russia gate, the damage could do to our societal trust of you. And they were missing my point. My point was, was that for decades, um, some of us have sold this bill of goods that the Democrats are basically incompetent nincompoops who don't know how to fight for an issue and stay on messaging. Russia gate has proven without a shadow of a doubt that when they lose, they lose on purpose because they took that Russia gate thing and that was like the most magnificent 21st century version of um, McCarthyism 2.0. They red baited, red scared, <laughs> whatever you, whatever word you could put in, you could put red in front of. They did it with precision, and they kept that joint going, and they still trying to keep that joint going even after everything has been exposed. What it was. People have lost reputations behind this. They have lost sleep behind this. Their families have been divided and torn apart because of this nonsense. And the whole time, they're still lying. And Richard Steele's probably out there still some, st still out there somewhere still saying, no, 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 um, I believe this, 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 and that. And like somebody says, we're going to start getting to the point now where, forget about, uh, where all this is going to start to look really religious. And what I mean by that is, is that um, it's going to get to the point where people are just going to say, no matter how much information is put in front of them, well, I just believe that that's what happened. That despite the evidence, this is what happened. That's how I feel about it. And honestly, given the way the media has operated for the last 20 to 30 years, why, why, why wouldn't they do that? Why wouldn't they be thinking that somewhere in some room someplace, or, you know, smoking cigars, people are sitting there and just deciding, well, this is what we're going to release out there. This is what we're not going to release out there. You know, well, how is this any different than people think about, feel about the assassination of JFK and the whole magic bullet theory? Which is why I still ain't just said, okay, look, 
we decide to pull a coup. <laughs> That's what it was. Um, don't you think you're, with your high stock market values and everything else, you should be thanking us? Just come out and say it. But this idea that Lee, Har Lee Harvey Oswald was the one guy who shot it, and he shot a bullet that went through like five, six impacts. It's like, come on, man. It, you know, it's over. It's done. You know, it, it's like people right now example. are going to be. Gervais, I'm glad you brought it up. We'll talk about Oliver Stone's JFK. There yep. are people that still think that that's an authentic telling of the assassination of John F. Kennedy, and oh. that is the evidence that was actually put out in court. All that stuff was changed to make the movie more dramatic. Yep. I do, bro. I, 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 I hear what you dude. It's like we are we we don't stand a chance. We are defenseless. So at this point, nobody goes and reads out. For themselves, they don't go look into this stuff for the because they're just consuming, 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 for consuming. <laughs> Nobody has time to <laughs> breathe and be like, "Let me contemplate what I've that. just heard." There's got to be something behind that. Let me go read into it, yeah. and then when you start getting some of the details from multiple yeah, but sources, people have, you can kind of get an idea of what's going on. Yeah, and then even then, you'll be told that half of that isn't true. So, I mean, you know, well, the, yeah, and that's the thing. I, I, like, oh, yeah, yeah, no, like, I, but I, I think in this case, I think in this case, usually we we get down on people who are either apathetic or nihilistic. And it's at this point, I'm standing up for the apathetic and nihilistic people. It's like, dude, it's like nobody has this. Nobody has time to be sitting here trying to figure out who killed JFK. Especially even if you once you did figure out who killed JFK, either you would be joining him, or there would be nothing you could do about it. Anymore. No. And, and that's what it comes down to. It's like you you barely have enough time to figure out how to deal with the a-holes in front of you who are lying dead to your face about, um, well, your rent's going up for this reason, and you find out that basically he's not even using that service anymore. And I use myself as an example, like when I was working um, back in a video store called York Video, and, and I was told that, you know, we had to cut back on um, – cut back on our salaries because things were real tight and all that. And I'm paying my check. And, if, and I found out later that for two years, the guy had been taking um, out of my paycheck um, a premium for an insurance, for an insurance company, uh, insurance, he dropped two years ago. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, dude, I got to deal with that. I'm not going to deal with that and then whether or not Gorbachev, um, and I'm going way back, whether uh, Mikhail Gorbachev is really the enemy or Putin or whatever it is, I, I don't got time for that. But I got to deal with the knucklehead that's in front of me that's ripping me off. I got to worry about him and how you're ripping me off my taxes here or Bezos is flying to flying a rocket up to the moon or doing a space ride and my tax dollars are paying for it. Man, nobody's got time for that. And even in the stuff that's obvious on his face that's dead wrong, what can you really do about it anyway? Because then when you do kind of operate off of the information that you have, our elected officials and politicians and those in authority just look you right dead in your face and say, I'm not doing that and just go do something anyway. So, well, I, you know, I used to sheep, really be just, they're the worst ones. Mm -hmm. They're like, oh, you're Who's just that? this conspiracy theorist. It's like, listen, I'm just dealing in facts here. I, I'm yeah, sorry that, it, that it's upsetting you. You know, and that goes on both sides. They're, they're absolutely yeah, true. Well, on, the, yeah. on both spectrums of everything. And I just, I can't believe when you look at the numbers like I think they're the only thing in the in the United States that's trusted less than the news media. I think is Congress, mm -hmm. as, as far as the poll numbers out there. Yeah. Everyone knows that the, the the news is no longer providing facts and information mm -hmm. that they're they're trying to manipulate us. Yet we everyone's still buying into it, and they're still using the information being put out like from these these uh, you know shitty sources that are clearly biased, that aren't trying to to provide clarity on anything against each other in these stupid aha gotcha moments. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, but but the thing is, is that what else are they supposed to do? I mean, that's at the end of the day. It's like, you know, unless you're going to start running your own... in facts and say, these are the, this is where I'm coming from. Yeah, but if, your facts, but if your facts, but if your facts are completely and totally suspect, there's no point in doing that. I mean, I, I, you I, have to you do know, it for look, yourself. If you want to argue something, yeah. go read up on it. Okay, yeah, well, that's true. Okay, you know, but that's different. So, yeah, if, you, if you're talking about somebody actually who's engaging in this as either an occupation and or a very committed hobby, I'll give you that. Everybody else, I leave off the hook. It's like, if, if that's what they're being fed, then that's what they're being fed. If they're being fed suspect stuff, they're being fed suspect stuff. Yeah, you can't be a and mark, have, You got to know what's going on. Well then, but if you if you're gonna if you're not gonna be a mark, then the the ultimate response to not being a mark with this is like, yo, I'm not bothering with that. It's like I'm gonna deal with what's in front of me. 
That's all there is to it. And when it affects me, like the news uh, articles or like a a news report, and just break it down to all the falsehoods that are in there. Like that's why I like skeptics. Well, that's what I'm saying. But yeah, but but those are people that are doing that. Like I said, at a certain point though. It's like, do I believe the, the the skeptic guys or do I believe these guys over here? I got no problem with saying main, mainstream media sucks. No, I should Source never believe a word they say. Information and let me go read. Yeah, it. don't 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 take anything at uh, at face value. I got no problem with that because they they they've proven they they have they have willingly and complicitly and uh, and apparently joyfully gleefully um, thrown away all their credibility. It's like no one's gonna believe CNN anymore. No one's gonna believe Fox, MSNBC. None of those people on those channels, whether they're opinion, uh, news, hard news reporters or opinion people, none of them should be believed from this point forward. If the independent YouTubers don't watch themselves, they will find themselves in the same place as the Young Turks have. It's like, dude, your word is your bond means something. It means that when people hear you say something, when you when you say something, it means they be- they believe you. They're, they're trusting that you're operating in, in good faith off of the information that you have at hand. That's why that whole stupid thing that Clinton introduced into the lexicon a while ago, it's better to be um, wrong and strong than right and weak is garbage. Because the thing is, is that people can people can forgive a mistake if they know that you are authentically and honestly operating off of the information you had at hand. Which means when you find out something different, you just correct. And then you move on to the next conversation. But this idea of everything being like basically projected reality, like whatever I tell you that, you know, no, perception is reality. That 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 bunch of nonsense. That whatever people perceive, then that means that that makes it true. That's a bunch of nonsense. It opens you up to a, a an infinite level of of emotional subjectivity that serves nobody in the long run. Nobody. Because and and actually, and this is how the, the good Lord operates. Let's get in this morning without knowing uh, this what the topic was, came across this quote. But and I'm in the firm camp with this is that this is from a guy by the name of Ben Bradley that the truth, no matter how bad, is never as dangerous as a lie in the long run. And that's and that's where we're at right now. We're we're at the stage now that's where we're I'm dealing teaching with lies my son in the long every run. Day. That's right. I tell my I tell my daughters all the time. I said, look, tell me the truth. With the truth, I can help you. If you lie to me, you're going to lie or tell a lie so big to a certain point that you will actually make it such that I can't help you at all because you've just gone too far. But the truth, it doesn't matter how crappy it is, it's better to basically take that shot in the arm and keep moving <laughs> to get the wound treated than to be walking around and possibly getting a, an, a lead, an infection from lead or whatever it is. It, it's just, guys, you know, and, and we're seeing it now. We're seeing it play out in real time where it's like you cannot have with some people an intelligent forward-moving conversation anymore. And it's not, and it's honestly, to a certain extent, it's not anybody's fault because we're all being played, we're all being manipulated, we're all being lied to, we're all being pushed around on the chessboard, and and people are smiling your face and telling you, "Well, I'm doing it for your good," and they're not, and they're not. So it's like you know, like I said, it used to be your word was your bond, your word meant something, and nowadays your word doesn't mean anything. It's just like who cashes my checks, and whoever cashes my checks, and whatever they want me to say, that's what I'll say. I remember the we saw that news clip that everyone laughed about where you had like the Iraq uh, like news minister, minister or whatever. Mm-hmm. He's saying there are no like uh, allied <laughs> uh, vehicles in in this city or whatever, and you could see him in the background. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was like, no, it's like yeah, which, and, and that's where and that's what comes from a culture that was comes from a global culture, at least if not a global culture, at least a culture of elites. Where basically, and this is what it is, man, and, and, and people are going to disagree with me, but I've been in this elite environment either intimately or on the outside, but I've been connected or worked at it now. The problem with a lot of elite culture is it's the lack of accountability. They, some of these people pay no consequences for what they do. No. Stuff that you would get fired for, or you would get thrown in jail for at the drop of a hat, there, there's like 15 layers between them and actual punishment all times. Uh, yeah, think about that I, dude I, at CNN, the one that got caught on the Zoom call. Remember that guy? Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, Jeffrey is, Tuber. Yes, Tubin. he's yep. on the news talking about yep. Rittenhouse and saying he's an idiot. Yep. Like, who the fuck are you, man? Like, yeah, what he's did the you legal expert. Doing? <laughs> he's the legal expert. You literally exposed oh, no. yourself to your co workers. 
No, no. It's like uh, it's like our good friend uh, Juicy Smoyer. It's, it was the same thing with that. It was just like, yo, he sits up there, what, he makes that story up. And I remember at the time, and I remember my wife was reminiscing about that. With anyone that heard that story, it did. That doesn't it sound did. right. That's I said, I, I, and this, and so this is this is in the Dargan household because I believe in. I mean, man, if you're gonna go out there and do that, that's on you, brother, and sister. You know, <laughs> black, white, Puerto Rican, <laughs> Puerto Rican, Asian, it, or Asian. It, it's like when you go on and say something like that, man. You better be telling the truth because I remember saying to my wife at the time, I said, you know what. That shit don't make no damn sense. Somebody with that kind of money coming in this, coming back from a trip to Chicago, and you have to go to a subway at in that freezing weather. But I think that's a polar vortex time. You're gonna go to a subway at two or three in the morning to get a sandwich. It's like, dude, DoorDash that joint. Or don't you have like a personal assistant to do that? Make sure your refrigerator is stocked before you get there. And then this just happened to be random white guys walking around with MAGA hats on with nooses in their pocket looking for you. <laughs> looking for you. I said, but I said, if it didn't happen, then I, that's messed up. That should have happened to the brother. But it was like, are you serious? Come on, man. It well, like, shouldn't happen. It's, but it's so unbelievable that you're like, <laughs> oh, I'm no, going to need not- some evidence on this. There's literally video cameras everybody in the world right now. Let's see the evidence. Oh, no, and, and that's the terrible part is that once it got exposed, what was going on, I forget the, the name of the chief of police, who was our chief of police at that point uh, over here in Bel Air. But uh, Eddie, I think it would say it was Eddie Brown or something like that. But it's like, you know, he was hot when it, when it came out, they got played. He was hot. Only to a few months later get caught up in his own nonsense. <laughs> Line is behind off. Oh, these people are terrible. These, but that's what it is, guys. It's like you you have you have people who basically um, someone had uh, a comment to me on the section thing one time that when I was talking about my fantasy of uh, living on my uh, grand compound that I was going to be untouchable. No, I, I'm not trying to be untouchable. These people are trying to trying and succeeding at being untouchable. They are the big urns <laughs> for those of you who are kingpin fans. They are the big urns of society. They literally are above the law. And, and and you look at um uh, let's go back to CNN then because I don't mind taking a, a, a shot at CNN and um Chris Cuomo and look at all the cover he ran for his brother Andrew I mean using the media to literally run cover for your brother knowing dang well what he was doing you're not gonna tell me when they weren't having the Sunday dinners like uh bad boy well, was it uh what's that cop show uh, whatever that cop show Blue Bloods you don't have to tell me when they sitting there having the Sunday dinners that joint wasn't coming up. <laughs> this dude is running well, cover. They don't care Ron about the interests of one? nothing. Oh, he's been geez, just man. trashing Florida this ah. entire time, and then he's down in Florida without a mask on, enjoying the, the 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 way of living that's going on there. It's like, do you believe this, or are you just saying this because you know that's the message that you need to? It's, it's crazy. Yeah, yeah. And let me just throw, throw this out there real quick. And the reason why you don't hear me often bagging as much on the conservative media uh, for doing some of the same things because I don't watch it. <laughs> so so all of all of my experience in terms of people selling us out and all that happens to be more on the liberal, progressive side of media because that's what I consume. But I, I presume that all this is going on the, on the right as well. But for those of you out there who would sit here and watch this program and say, oh, they do. It's going out to the left. They never go after the right about anything. Uh, uh, I remember you that's the only... Yeah, I, I know that. That's your face. Exactly. Uh, but that did. Yeah, oh yeah, Candace Owens. Yeah, well that's, well, that's like because that's, that's that personal. <laughs> yeah, because she used to be on the left, and that's why. So I could go after her more efficiently. Than somebody. Like, like I said, Trump, Trump either. He used to be on the left. With Trump? Oh no, but well, that was with Trump. No, but do you think the thing with Trump was the thing with Trump is it's not so much that he was on the left. It's just that it was that whole birth of it. It was just stupid. It was just like, yo, dude, come on. It's like I didn't like the whole housing thing. I knew about that. I didn't like the whole Central Park thing. I was like, All right, you know, whatever. You know, it's like, you know, I watched The Princess. It was like, whatever. But the thing is, is that with the whole birth of thing, it was just like, yo, dude, now, come on, man. Now, look, I wasn't, I'm not a big Obama fan. It's like, you know, our, our family lost our, lost our home behind the whole 2008 thing, and he pretty much didn't lift any, man, any of a finger to do anything about it. Man, we talk about that housing crisis. And what oh, yeah, we'll talk about it. Yeah, we'll talk about it, but the housing crisis. But at the same time, it's like, I'm not going to sit up there and after like eight years of Bush and everybody's telling us, 
throw it at me. Well, do you pray for the president every night? Do you pray for success? And then the minute it becomes somebody that you don't like, and it seems like because it's a particular uh, hue of his skin, all of a sudden everybody wants to act like he's not the president of the United States or the office doesn't mean anything. Because I grew up with the thing of, you, if you don't respect the person, you at least respect the office. And I felt like all of a sudden, in a moment of grand hypocrisy, are we uh, saying the that they, on the right they side were, threw they the were office out the window. George Bush when they were calling him the devil. Before I'm not that. saying that. What I'm saying is that the conservative retort to that was yeah, is that he's sides. the I'm president. Not we're oh no, I'm not, dude. Other. I'm not saying it's not both sides. I'm not saying it's not both sides. What I'm saying is, if you want to say one thing over here, then you hold it up over here, and if you don't, you don't. I'm not responsible for every every lefty who's basically a raging hypocrite. Matter of fact, even, even on my own lefty side, they're hypocritical. We're hypocritical uh, towards each other, apparently. It's like, it is what it is. I got to deal with the Kristen Cinemas and the Joe Manchins of the world. That's what I, that's what I, I got to deal with. Somebody, Kristen Cinema, by the way, so 10 years ago was saying one thing, and now it's like, who are you again? So I'm not, So my point is, is that it's not like I'm saying um, one side's better than the other. Or it's not both sides. I'm beyond the both sides thing. I got I got um, converted yeah, and convicted it's, it's, on the both sides thing about we, three years ago. We're still they getting also, paid. That's the thing, Gervais. Exactly. We're still that's the point. Like, what we're, the hell? No. No, 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 what I'm saying is, is that they all suck. They all what? suck. So all I'm saying George is, is that somebody asked me about Barack Obama wasn't what? the devil. Wasn't? Trump isn't the devil. I'm not sure about Biden, but potentially. I don't know. Well, I'm saying that you're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> No, but but even with Biden and Trump, that's that's the whole point. Is that you know, we talked about this before. But I said that me too crap. I said, guys, you just do not want to do this. Don't go into that. And then because God likes practical jokes, the minute you start gloating, the minute you start doing these things where you know you are totally out of line, He always brings that joint back around and smacks you over the head with it. You're literally gonna sit up there and go after Trump the way that you. That you did with Trump. Now, I'm not saying that he wasn't to be gone after, but I'm saying if you do that, then I promise you, God, Buddha, Vishnu, <laughs> uh, Zeus, <laughs> is, you name it, karma, kismet, whatever it is, is going to come around and put you in the same dang position and watch you play yourself. <laughs> watch you play yourself. Biden comes along, it's practically the same thing. There's actually more corroborating evidence than there was with the whole Trump thing. And it's like, well, that's my guy, so I'm not going to talk or do anything about that. I don't know what to tell people. That's why, you know, as I said before, that 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 is the Achilles heel of cancel culture is, is that, dude, everybody has done something which they regret. So you better have a way to, one, forgive, reconcile, and rehabilitate, rehabilitate and move on because we all got to live on this planet together in this country together and our communities together and do things. So it's one thing to want to hold people accountable and to be even to be frustrated with their lack of accountability that can be had. But you never want to get to the point, as, as in one of the, the con- discussions I had in the comment screen with somebody, where you start getting to the point where you're saying the ends justify the means. Because once you get there, believe me, you ain't seen complicated to when you start thinking the ends justify the means. The ends should never justify the means. If anything, the ends should elevate the means. You should be even more um, careful about what you do, more objective, um, more have more integrity. This this whole thing of like, well, I got to get from point A to point C, and whatever I got to do to get to point C, because point C is a noble goal or noble or, or good outcome, I can do whatever I want. That's That's not even the road to hell being paid with good intentions. You're just wrong. So, anyway. Yeah, well, you know. It can't it's always let's, I'll tell you this. I'm disengaged. When people try to talk to me about politics or whatever, I'll do it here oh, with yeah. you or, you know, maybe yeah, with my exactly. wife or whatever. It's, it's a pointless thing. Otherwise, it's like, I'm good. Yeah. Exactly. I don't care what you think at this point. It, 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 I don't want to have the, the argument. It's not yeah, yeah, worth my even, time. There's nothing I can say to you that's going to change your mind mm-hmm. whether you agree with yep. me or not. Yeah, and it's the same thing. Even like um, to bring this even to the since we are a comic book channel, the comic books. It's like it, it, this this culture war in comics, which I know I've spoken to a few people. It's like it's just getting tired of this crap. It's like look, it's like it's terrible. I get it. And again, like what can you what can you do about these people who are clearly clearly intent on inject, injecting culture war politics? into the entertainment, the hobby that we all call comics. It's like, I remember a time, yes, I am that old, where it's like when I read a comic and I had no idea 
with the political or personal ideology was a writer. I could presume it if I wanted to from the stories that they told, but it was like I had no idea what the what these men and women thought politically. And I liked it that way. <laughs> I realized that I enjoyed it that way. Because it's like, other than some obvious, obvious tropes, where it's just like, yeah, that's what they're doing, and that's the time that culture. But even then, I had the option of just not buying that book and moving on to something else. But it's gotten to the point now, it's so pervasive, it's so in your face, that it's just like, dude, I, I just, I don't care about your personal politics. I don't care, I don't, I don't need my hobby or my entertainment. And not because I'm an anti-SJW or anything like that. I'm just saying, as a consumer of entertainment, there's like, I only want so much politics in it. And if I do get it, I want it Star Trek, Star Trek the original series style as a morality play. Not as an actual political statement uh, in writing. Give it to me Shakespeare style. That's how you feed it to me. Let me have to like look at the figure out which part of the, the play, which is usually a soliloquy, where you're telling me your personal feelings. Everything it should not be all throughout the damn piece. So anyway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's the that's the biggest <laughs> thing is well, they're no longer trying to inform, they're they're trying to persuade, they're trying to Yeah, uh, you know, essentially manipulate it and uh Yeah, that's the word to inform. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're all aware of what's going on, Gervais. The, the polls mm -hmm. say nobody trusts the media, but we continue nope. to get uh, hoodwinked, bamboozled yep. into fighting with each other. Uh, you know, a long time, a lot of times with very bad information. Yeah, no, and, and that's the thing, and that's the key thing is that you can't have these kind of discussions with bad information. You, you, you just can't. And if and and I'll say, I'll go to my wife on this one. You know, because we were talking about this in regards to something else, but she's like, you know, I'm not interested in just sitting around speculating all the time, and I'm with her. I'm not, I have no desire. It's like, I want to move forward. Like she said, I want to move forward and I'm trying to get to the truth, learn how to live and how to do stuff. I'm not interested in sitting around speculating about whether somebody did this or did that or this is how it should go. It's like, there's supposed to be rules. There's supposed to be law. There's supposed to be an order to things. And if you, and if you invite me into an activity or to do something or to an organization or an occupation or whatever it is, I'm operating according to those rules, uh, good and bad. Um, operational disciplinary and it's like and when people want to start playing around and acting like well that's not really what the book said or not what the manual said or that's not what this is that I'm out <laughs> I'm out I don't have time for that nobody has time for that and neither should we because we come in as a as, a, as the general public we come in good faith to sit down in front of a program that purports itself to be a purveyor a purveyor of truth if you if you're saying I'm simply a provoca a media provocateur, you should say that up front so at least I know what I'm getting and I can decide whether or not I want to sit there and waste my time with you. That's it. I do want to say thank you very much to Jave Dargan for joining me today uh, for this conversation, kind of talking about the news media, the way we're all being manipulated. Next week we are going to talk a little bit more about comic books, but it's not just going to be a comic book discussion. It's going to be bigger than that. Stay frosty, people.